Welcome to Juniper Network's Educational Services Learning Bytes. The Juniper Wireless LAN topic for this learning byte will be an overview of the Ringmaster client interface. My name is Steve Elliott. I'll be your host. Section Objectives. After successfully completing this segment, you will be able to log in to the Ringmaster client interface and navigate the functional areas of the client GUI. Let's now log into Ringmaster using the regular client. We also support a 100% Java-based client as long as you have the right Java runtime environment installed on your machine. You will notice that's using the loopback address since the client is on the same machine as the server. The installation port is port 448. There's currently no username, no password set up. We can set up the super administrator and user groups for configuration monitoring or for monitoring only. We click on Next. That brings us to the main client interface where we'll continue our tour. Let's now take a look at the Ringmaster client interface. Located in the upper left hand corner are your drop down menus. Right below that is what we call the functional area icons where we can do configuration, planning, monitoring, or reporting. Located on the main screen, you will find the organizer panel located here on the left-hand side. These are objects related to the functional area that you've selected, in this case policies. And you can see that in the policy we can drill down to a lower level object. It's a hierarchical form that we use for the organizer panel. What you select in the organizer panel will show the main properties for that object in the center, what we call the viewing panel. Now, the viewing panel will display things normally in a table type of format with the ability to drill down to the more advanced attributes for an object through the properties wizard. Located on the right hand side is what we call the task panel. The task panel provides you with advanced wizards that may be grouped by different groupings. In this case here it's Policy Changes, Create, and Setup. Located down at the very bottom is our status bar. This shows things like configuration errors and warnings, local changes and network changes, and alarms. Let's now take a look at the functional areas. Policies allows us to configure once, apply to many. This is a generic controller object and we add in the objects that are commonly configured between a group of controllers. We can set up global policy or model specific and version specific policies. The next functional area is RF planning. RF planning allows us to use the predicted planning license and to then pre-plan out a deployment. We can use the advanced visualization to be able to see the coverage area and play what if. Next let's look at the configuration functional area. Underneath the configuration functional area you will see in the left hand organizer that I have my groupings like Sunnyvale is a mobility domain with three controllers in it. We can go to an individual controller such as EDU4 go down to let's say the management services object and let's go and enable for example the telnet service. I can then save my change to my network plan use the right hand task panel fast deployment wizard to deploy my change down and I could then go and telnet into my controller. Let's now take a look at verifications. Verification functional area consists of warnings and errors that while we're building the candidate configuration it will keep track of. In this case here we have a warning on EDU1 controller. The object is the controller object itself. It is a warning and it's showing me the message that the enable password is missing. 
I can go over to resolutions located on the right hand side where I can launch a wizard to go ahead and correct this by putting in a password directly into the properties for that controller. Other resolutions you have are to disable a rule for all instances or to disable the rule for this instance only so that you could deploy out. In some cases you may also have to create something that is missing that's related to another object. Next is device management. This functional area allows us to be able to deploy changes or do image upgrades. For example, I have a controller here that I want to deploy changes down immediately for. I can deploy for a group of controllers at the same time, or I can schedule the deployment during the maintenance window. Underneath the task panel located down on the lower right hand side is device operations. Device operations allows me to be able to do an image install. For example, I want to upgrade these two controllers to the latest version, which is 7.6. I can check my image repository, and I can see that I've got the correct image for this controller. I can then schedule the install for that particular image at a particular time and date. Let's now take a look at the global monitoring functional area. This allows us to monitor all of our equipment with the ability to drill down to lower levels such as down to the controller, down to the AP, or down to the radio level. There are four major areas that we can monitor. Status summary is that for all of our controllers, APs, and the radios. Client monitoring allows us to build monitor clients in a number of different ways. For example, maybe I want to see clients related to a particular service. Alarm summary allows us to look at our alarms in four different categories. System, performance, client, and security. In each one of those categories, we have different levels, info, minor, major, and critical alarms. We also can look at a detailed table view, which is also underneath alarms here. To go back, I can click on the back arrow located here, which will take me back to the previous screen. Traffic allows us to look at our traffic by time. For example, I may want to look at a 24-hour view or a 6-month view or a 1-year view. Left-hand organizer panel includes two other groupings of equipment. We can look at equipment by SSID, for example, what services the equipment is related to. Or I can go down, if I've done planning, and look at my services based on the equipment related to a particular area. The next functional area is client monitoring. Client monitoring is used for advanced troubleshooting and performance tuning. It has the same equipment groupings and organizer panels as a regular monitoring. You will also find that you have detail about seeing clients in a number of different ways, like clients by SSIDs. The advanced feature licenses for Ringmaster allow for voice call tracking. This allows you to be able to monitor voice calls and to be able to do performance tuning and troubleshooting. Let's now take a look at our another functional area for monitoring, security monitoring. Security monitoring includes intrusion detection and intrusion protection. For intrusion detection alarms, these will include things like for ad hoc networks, clients of rogue APs and rogue APs. For attacks on your system, we have denial of service alarms that will also be monitored for. At any time, you can look at details by clicking on details below any table or graph. This will take you over to the alarm summary page, and the alarm summary functional area allows us to see a history of our alarms and also be able to sort them based on severity, category, description, the object that's seen them, the state, for example. We can get exclusive details of the alarm itself and look at the events related to the alarm. 
If I select a particular alarm, I can also have advanced things that I can go do, for example, like locate this particular threat out there, and then I can send somebody out to disconnect it from the network, or I can go and enact countermeasures against it. With our fault correlation engine, we also have the alarm summary here so that we can see our alarms at a higher level in graphical format with the ability to drill down to lower levels. We have a high degree of customization within our alarms functional area, which we can set up what alarms we want to see and what classification we want to give them for severity. We can also set up for notification as well as set our database um, maintenance behavior. We can acknowledge alarms, we can delete active alarms, we can also do reports on alarm summary or alarm history. Let's now take a look at the functional area on reports. We give you a whole list of CAN reports for different categories. These CAN reports also have a degree of customization where you can set up the scope and the period of time that you want it to be generated for. Reports can also be set up to be scheduled to run at a given period of time. For example, this is a self-documenting system, so I want a complete inventory report at this time. So I come over to Report. I set the scope for the entire network plan, and for this network plan instance, I want all my controllers to be managed that I want to report on for inventory. I have different formats for HTML, PDF, or XMLS. We'll just do HTML. I could have it emailed to a particular person, um, and I could copy the report to an FTP server. So now we're generating an HTML port. Now from here, I'll go and launch that link and launch the browser. It allows me to come in, and I have my CAN report now with my complete list of controllers over here and complete list of APs. This concludes the Ringmaster Client Overview. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.